all and good morning. It is day 11 of the Carpetbagger Choose My Adventure road trip. Tomorrow morning, I will be waking up, I will be looking at my phone and seeing where you guys are sending me. Uh, you can vote to either send me to Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, San Antonio, Texas, or Corpus Christi, Texas. Uh, you can still vote. I uh, will check it as soon as I get up tomorrow morning and uh, we will head whatever city you guys tell me to. But today, we are in Houston, Texas. And Houston, we have a problem. We are in the, we are at the Space Center Houston, the visitor center for the Johnson Space Center here in Houston, Texas the famed launching area, and is also a space museum. I recently visited the Kennedy Space Center in uh, Cape Canaveral, Florida, so I'm interested to see um, how this is similar, how it is different, how it compares. So uh, let's check this out. Without further ado, please follow me. So we're greeted by this, the Space Shuttle Independence. That's pretty impressive. I guess the shuttle will be launched off the back of an airplane, kind of a piggyback ride up into space and then it jumps off and heads in to the deep recesses of the universe. All right, and here we are inside the Space Center. A space simulator there. Uh-oh, it's like a rough ride through space. It says this is the world's largest orientated palisite. It says it's a type of iron meteor that only 60 of them exist. And this is the largest one. And I guess we're free to just put our hands all over it. It's kind of a rusty feel to it. All right, so guest service, you got to book your, your tram tour. I am um, going to be going at 1250. Uh, apparently, we're going to do the mission, uh, the historic mission control, which sounds pretty cool. Heat, hmm. fuel, This is the RX-5. This is an experimental space suit. It was built to be almost like a suit of armor, almost like a stormtrooper suit, but uh, apparently it was too heavy, too clunky to use, but I, I do love the design. See a replica there of the International Space Station. And here, who's on the International Space Station right now, we have cardboard cutouts of all the astronauts that are currently up there in space. I guess they switch these out depending on uh, which astronauts are up there right now. And here we have Sally Ride's coveralls, the first woman in space. It's a replica of the space shuttle there. And check out this mural. It's like astronauts juggling food in space. the item which people have the most curiosity regarding the space toilet. You can see all the tubes and whatnot, the hose you use to suck up your own feces and urine. Oh, the space toilet. You can see the seal there. It says International Space Station Orbital Outhouse Team. I imagine there is some weird accomplishment with, with knowing that you've taken a crap in space. Oh, here we have some delicious space food. These cans, we got some roasted quail. Make sure that's delicious. Meat and vegetable stew. Omelet layer cake with tomatoes and herbs in that little cat food can. Uh, chicken and Russian nutmeg sauce. There's a dry uh, sausage patty. Some m ms you gotta be careful those m ms um, you know, They'll get loose and they'll get everywhere. It's like when Homer opened the bag of chips <laughs> in space. There's something called a can of snack. It's a Canadian snack with maple syrup. It's got the little maple leaf on it. Now this is interesting. I did not know this was a thing that existed. We have uh, liquid salt and pepper. Oh my gosh, I'm almost curious to like try those myself. And that delicious looking spaghetti with meat sauce or space getty, if you will. Okay, here we have a 
space robot. His name is Ronot, an astronaut helper. Says that uh, he was tested on the International Space Station and uh, returned to Earth. An upgraded version of the robot will soon join the crew at the station. So they're gonna have a robot? Oh my gosh. Um, you know, couldn't, what a, I don't know, I just see like a thousand scenarios where he takes over the space station and things go horribly wrong. I don't know, would you guys, leave a comment in the comment section. Would you trust Robonaut? Here's a glove box. It's got the holes where you stick your hands in the gloves and work on all these experiments. I know that if I did that, I would just make a mess out of everything with the hands and the gloves and yeah, I'd just spill everything and all the other astronauts would be mad at me. Here's where they would grow plants in space. This is where they plant pillow. You can see the uh, radishes growing there. Interesting, you go to space and the first thing you grow is radishes. You can imagine at the end of the space, space uh, trip, they're like, who wants radishes? And everyone, all the astronauts are, are so sick of radishes. You just eat big piles of radishes. It says this is a celebration shirt worn by an astronaut named Dick Covey. He wore this shirt in space as a celebration of his return to Earth. I guess break out the break out the Hawaiian shirts. Here's some other space clothes. You can see they have like loops around the feet. I guess no gravity. They don't want their pant legs uh, floating up. Apparently the other shoe in this pair got lost in space. Um, apparently this the stuff floats around and gets lost all the time in the space station so the other shoe floated away and they don't know where it ended up so I don't know is the space how big is the space station just have random shoes floating around everywhere this is from a, uh, a astronaut Randy Bresnik who had a baby in space well actually he didn't have a baby in space his wife had a baby back on earth while uh, he was in space, but apparently handed out these bubblegum cigars to his uh, fellow astronauts. These are space flowers. It says these were actually created by a cosmonaut as a gift to the other uh, people on the space station. It was made out of scrap, I guess, scrap material from uh, working on uh, the station. And here's a Star Trek shirt that was actually brought to space by astronaut Greg Chamatoff. Apparently, the uh, said a lot of the astronauts were fr were fans of Star Trek, and they would uh, have binging marathons watching Star Trek on uh, the space station. Apparently, these tennis balls were juggled in space. Now, apparently, juggling is very difficult in space. The two astronauts devised a two-man juggling technique that they could use to juggle these tennis balls. This hat was worn by a Japanese astronaut to serve a meal to his fellow astronauts in space. You can see where the astronauts sleep here. Looks like it's some sort of space coffin that they slept in. But uh, yeah, you look, I guess that's a sleeping bag strapped to the wall. They got all their toiletries right there fastened in uh, to their toiletry kit there. And they got their laptop there. So probably shouldn't be using the laptop before bed. It uh, isn't good for your uh, isn't good for your sleep. A model of the living chambers here on uh, Space Station. Our astronauts and cosmonauts are offered an extensive menu full of tasty foods and beverages, including pizza, chicken, and whatever else it is you like. In order to increase the shelf life and make the food lighter, much of the food is dehydrated. Step number one to using the restroom in space is turn on the suction. Number two goes in here. You can't really see it from where you're sitting, but it's a really small hole. About the size of a golf ball. Now guys, remember, we live in the closed environment of space, and water is a very scarce commodity. So, we recycle and purify any and all water. Yeah. Meaning, liquid waste goes into there, and ends up filtered in here. All recycled. Yes, that is drinking water. 
This is a shuttle ejection escape suit. It says it was worn on the maiden voyage of the Columbia. It says this is the type of space suit that'll be used for having a spacewalk. Very interesting. I noticed the patch over here has that Da Vinci symbol with a astronaut on it. See the astronaut there hovering above our heads. <laughs> Waiting to hop onto one of these simulators here. All right, when do we get to actually fly this thing? We're gonna launch, launch. Okay, we gotta wait. Launch, there we go. All right. We're gonna launch this. We're gonna steer it into space within this. And keep it in the middle, going into, going into space. Oh, this is hard. Oh, there we go, there we go. Into space. Lost in space. I'm starting to think that I'll never be an astronaut. It's a model of the Orion space shuttle. You can actually peek inside. Here we can see the astronauts. And yeah, that is a that is some tight quarters there. That's tighter than the uh, than the International Space Station. It looks like just like a bunch of lawn chairs in a in a little tube. So we've got padding on the wall to keep them from smashing into the wall. Almost like being in the genie's bottle on uh, I Dream a Genie. See this guy here is working on his tablet. It's the apple. Actually, you got apples floating everywhere fruit just flying around hitting everyone in the face i would i would go crazy if i was forced to live amongst people this closely with fruit flying everywhere astronaut with his jet pack there flying through space this is a replica of the rocket used to shoot orion into space use this device to build up pressure in order to launch a rocket all the way up there i guess we'll Turn, uh, turn this wheel here and build up the necessary pressure to go to space. All right, the perfect amount of rocket pressure here. All right, and then we'll launch, this is actually a soda bottle. We'll launch it here. Oh, wow. So here you can tell the difference between gravity on a suitcase on Mars and a suitcase on Earth. This is the Earth suitcase, so yeah, kind of heavy, a little heavy. And we have the Mars suitcase here. Oh yeah, and that's just, you could just swing it around. So it's super light. Here we have the rare opportunity to touch Mars. They have a tiny little piece of a Mars meteorite. A piece of rock came from Mars. Oh, it feels kind of rough, a little bumpy. I don't know if any sort of Mars energy, any sort of Martian powers are being absorbed into my body, but uh, we will find out. All right, the time has come for our tram tour. So uh, we'll hop aboard the tram and it'll take us to Mission Control. And it is time to get aboard the space tram. Of course, you want to sit in the back because it's a wilder ride. Breezy today here. Texas Longhorns over there. The first flight director for American Space Flight. There it is, the uh, Mission Control Center. Mission Control. 
Interesting architecture on the outside there. Taking us in here to the mission control viewing room. This is actually the room where the astronauts' families would have watched the mission control. First row there is taking pictures of mission control. So yeah, this is the mission control used for the Apollo missions. This is the mission control where they sent a man to the moon. You can see the monitors down there, the coffee, the ashtrays, cigarettes. And then they would have watched the live footage from the moon landing on these monitors here. Pretty amazing. And the gentleman was telling us there's no computers in this room. No, nothing is technically a computer. It's all monitoring equipment, which is pretty amazing. Yeah, pretty extraordinary just to be able to look at this area, given the history that's behind it. I'm watching the moon landing on that little black and white TV there. These are original seats used in this room. You can see they actually have ashtrays on the back of them. You'll notice an American flag flying. This flag always flies if there's an American astronaut in space. So this here is actually a prototype of a space exploration vehicle made by NASA. Almost looks like a submarine type. It almost looks like Millennium Falcon as well with these windows. This is an Apollo lunar spacesuit. This spacesuit has actually been on the moon worn by an astronaut. You see he's got his little pooper scooper there, I guess probably not for dog turds, but maybe for moon rocks he's been picking up. This is the bio isolation garment worn by Mike Collins when he first returned from the moon. Of course, they had no idea what happens to your body on the moon. They thought they might get moon germs and bring them back to Earth that would cause some horrific pandemic. So they uh, sealed him in this suit to protect other people from his potential moon diseases. But I think uh, I think now they've established uh, that the moon is not riddled with disease. Here's an interesting look at like the inner workings of the suit. See all the tubes and pipes running through it. We have the Angry Birds space plates. I remember when Angry Birds in space came out. I was so excited. I love the original Angry Birds. I'm still really salty that you cannot play the original Angry Birds or Angry Birds in space for, for that matter. I, I hate the new ones. I just want to play the originals. Here's a scale where you can see how much you weigh on Neptune. So we'll step up here and I weigh 250 pounds on, well that's how much I weigh on Earth, is that different? Okay, so it's 1.12 the Earth's gravity, so it's not, not that different. But let's check out my, uh, my Mars weight here. So, hello. Where's my weight on Mars? Oh, you could just put me, you just pick me up and carry me over your head in Mars. So here are gravity wells. You got the ball down in the gravity wells and you got a crank to uh, create motion to get, there they go, get the balls out of the gravity wells. To play this sliding match game. I wish they would just let you play the actual game, uh, Angry Birds in Space. It's such a good game. It's amazing. And you can't play it anymore. Here in the rocket gallery, have the Explorer 1. This is the first object launched into orbit from Earth in 1958. There's the Faith 7 spacecraft launched in 1963. You can see the astronaut, how snug they are in there. It's ridiculous. Here are Omega Moon watches designed to be able to handle being launched into space and returning. This display case with different chunks of rocket, different things used, small items used on the 
rockets. It's a hand control to a lunar module. It's the lunar sample collection tools, like sort of the pooper scooper earlier. It's little things to pick up rocks and soil. Here's a moon fly. I actually flew to the moon aboard the America and the Challenger. And the moon twice. This is the best one. Here is the Apollo 17 command module. Now look at that. Peek in there. I know it's not the most important thing, and I know I'm probably overly focusing on it, but when I think of space, I think of claustrophobia. Being in a suit with a fishbowl on your head, crammed inside of a tiny little living quarters like this. Here we have a moon scene. That's pretty cool. See the astronauts there. Looks like they're drilling into the moon, jackhammering into the moon, and driving these pieces of rebar into the moon. Look at this, they also got space cameras there on their chests. So that's almost like the precursor to GoPros. This big metal door, we have the Lunar Samples Vault. We touched Mars earlier, so let's go ahead and touch the moon as well. So, touched Mars, touched the moon, got to work on touching all the other planets. And yes, I know the moon's not a planet. I'm going to work on touching all the planets and their moon. moon rock, this moon rock is smooth, but it may just be from people rubbing it all day. See, these are the chambers where they would test soil samples. See the worker there reaching through the glove holes to work on the moon dust. Now check out these big honking chunks of moon rock right there. Oh, this is charming. This is a docking module that connects an American uh, shuttle to a uh, Soviet shuttle. So, almost like a international adapter that lets one ship connect to a, another. Said that cr the creation of this was actually considered to be the end of the space race when Americans and Soviets finally became best friends forever. You can see how the American module and the Russian module, they connect there with the adapter. Said that they brought this calculator along in case the module's uh, computer went out, which just shows you the level of technology we use to get to space. <laughs> Some items that have flown to space. It's the book Isaac Asimov's Foundation and a toy raptor dinosaur. There's another Robonaut. I don't know, am I the only one that finds these Robonauts kind of suspicious. This one here, I mean, look at his helmet. He looks like some sort of evil character from uh, from Star Wars. And look at those eyes, those, those black eyes. They're like the doll's eyes. There's a wind turbine model of the space shuttle. So this would be used to be put in a wind tunnel to test how the wind would affect the shuttle. Here we have Skylab. Apparently this is America's first space station. People lining up to check out Skylab here. See the astronaut up there holding on to Skylab for dear life. So this is not the actual Skylab, but it is the training model where astronauts would train on Earth to get used to being in Skylab. And here we enter the Skylab. And oh, look at that. Look at that. We've got an astronaut spinning in the fetal position. Here's the living quarters. Oh, we see the astronaut showering right there, scrubbing himself down in the space shower. Oh, up there, that guy's having a snack, looking down on us, eating something out of that can. Some sort of delicious space food. All right, heading out to Independence Plaza where we can see um, that space shuttle that we saw coming in. And here is a SpaceX 
rocket. It said this particular rocket's actually been to space twice. It's had two launches. You can see over here how it's all black and dirty. Apparently, uh, these SpaceX rockets can actually launch things into space and then safely land on Earth. It said this has been launched into space twice in the year 2017 and then landed back safely on Earth. You can see we have the replica of the space shuttle right there. And then this is the actual 747 used to launch. And uh, we can actually head inside and uh, check out the innards. On top we can head into the shuttle flight deck. See up here, control deck. The astronauts would actually fly the shuttle. And looking down into the cargo hold, this is where they would ship things to space. These are garden shears that were used in space to cut off a antenna off of a satellite. Here's the airlock where the uh, spacewalking suit is kept. So I guess the astronauts go into here, get suited up, and get spit out into space. Now we're going to head into the 747 that is used to uh, take the shuttle to space. One seven forty-seven to move it across the country. To get it from California. So yes, it's modified. They've taken out all the commercial seats. And they just have a few here for the crew to sit and meet. And here's a model here, actually a radio-controlled model that was made to test this idea. There's a stress test on the plane here. It says without reinforcements, hit this button. It'll show, oh yeah, that's going to crush the plane. That's not good. But here, I guess they added reinforcements. And you can see, oh yeah, that plane's good. It can carry a shuttle. It's a little testing site where you can test it in the wind. You can add weight or remove weight. Oh, you don't want to go down like that. There we go. It's the gift shop here known as Space Trader. You can take home an astronaut preserved in a jar. Here are some headless astronaut coffee cups. You find out what it's like to drink out of the hollowed out body of an astronaut. Yeah, all sorts of astronaut paraphernalia in here. Because these little silver ones here. There's a bobble-headed astronaut. Whoa! Whoa! Oh, can't I'm losing my balance here on the moon. And then uh, it says, Houston, we have landed. That is a uh, a steer, I guess. A steer astronaut. Rosebud. Now I remember these plushies from the Kennedy Space Center. These are pretty amazing. Different planets. We have Earth right there. This guy here, he's a comet. There's the sun right here. And oh look, oh look. I found I found, finally found Uranus. Been looking for Uranus for a while. Here we have space dogs, space penguins. These unicorns are not wearing space suits, so I guess they're just normal unicorns. Some astronaut ice cream here. I don't know, from my perspective, you always see the astronaut ice cream in the, the gift shop. You never see any other types of food. Makes me wonder if astronauts eat nothing but ice cream. Oh no, I can't believe, can't believe they sell chips here. You can't take these to space. Remember what happened when uh, Homer Simpson opened the chips in space. Caused mass chaos. So thank you for joining me here at the Houston Space Center here in Houston, Texas. I hope you'll be joining me tomorrow as I arise out of my bed, I pull out my phone and I check and see which location you guys have voted that I head to next. And then I will get in my vehicle and I will proceed to that location. It really means a lot to me that you guys care enough to vote, care enough to watch these videos. Uh, if you'd like to help support the channel, consider contributing to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month. Also, we are selling enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that helps keep 
this train on the tracks, this boat in the water, and this dirigible in the air. Until tomorrow morning, my friends, this one's in the back.